Welcome to another episode of Eat Smoke Drink Coffee Edition. Today I am going to be taking you through something quite interesting. And I, I try to do this, but you can't always do it because it's not always possible to get the same kind of beans from the same source, the same cultivar, just a different process. Okay, so it's not always possible, but today, and first I want to thank Meebs Coffee, okay, Meebs Coffee from Milford, New Zealand. Um, for sending me these samples and I must say this paper tube is absolutely awesome it feels nice it's, you know I mean a bigger one would be cool you know like that can contain 250 grams of beans that would be friggin awesome but I th I'm not sure I think they're doing it only for the special blends because obviously it's probably gonna be quite costly to print these things and you know it's not like you know there's 3,000 percent margin of coffee so you got to be very wary of that but anyway today i'm going to take you through so thank you um meads meads coffee nz so today i'm going to take you through a famous um hacienda a, a famous um lot called hacienda barbara it's a panamanian geisha okay or geisha geisha so panamanian geisha so we're not talking about those japanese geishas but the latin american version um, this is the plant okay so this is not like some pseudo prostitution film um, so hacienda barbara the difference with these two okay so the, for all intents and purposes the um, roast level is similar slash the same the difference is this one here is an anaerobic grind and this oh, sorry an anaerobic um washed and this one here is just washed same bean same farm same everything just two different processes so without further ado I have um, two pour overs here I usually do AeroPress but I'm gonna do pour over for the um, geishas and I'm gonna take you through the nosing of the two the differences in the process okay so all right let's get snorting I mean sniffing I'm gonna first start with the washed our first appearance of the beans um, quite uniform actually they're, they're generally quite uniform the size differential isn't huge um, and the same with the other one obviously the same farm same beans um, so they don't look too um, different in size okay not, not a huge different in size but let's get to the Ooh, there's a very umami flavor to this one raw cacao A slight smokiness, plum powder, dehydrated plum powder, rose water, a little smoke, burnt sugar, just a hint of burnt sugar, like a burnt brown sugar. Actually, when you're making, when you're caramelizing brown sugar on the pan, in the pan, that's kind of what I'm getting slight butteriness woodiness there is a umami flavor i can't put my finger on i know it sounds weird but almost like a soya sauce kind of smell very interesting a different a very different gesture to the other one that i had the viking one that i um sniffed before there's a fattiness to it like an animal fat all right let's sniff this one i'm not getting a huge amount of that because i think um the cardboard i can smell the paper but it's not like the paper has a t um a particular smell just smells like paper you know what I mean so let's hmm. interesting much softer on the nose which is weird because it's supposed to be anaerobic but I think it's just not funneling the smells to me. Um, let's, uh, that's better. Okay, no, 
Take it back. Take it back. Okay. It is a bit funkier. Wet cloth. It does have the same savouriness. It smells a little less oily. It doesn't have that plum powder. It has a cacao, but not as prominent the cacao. The savouriness is not as strong. It has a slightly wet cloth smell like a... I mean, I wouldn't say too funky actually, which is interesting. Let me just keep sniffing it. A wet wood kind of smell. Hmm, interesting. Doesn't have the smokiness than the other one. Um, not as smoky, um, doesn't have that burnt sugar. This one has a bit more fruit, a bit more fruit forward. This one not as much, it's more savory. Actually, I mean, I think maybe it could be the medium that I'm sniffing it in. But, I'm putting my nose right at the bean, so, you know, nothing like putting your nose right up the bean. Actually, this has a bit more of a subdued nose to this. A more subdued nose, which is quite interesting in itself. Look, let's see how it sips, eh? All right, let's get nosing. I actually use two whiskey glasses here um, for nosing purposes, also because it looks pretty. Um, if I had two identical mugs, I would have done that probably, but no. Let's uh, sniff this one. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's start with this one. We get that plum, cherry, leather, fl freshly tanned leather. The smokiness is there, burnt sugar, but actual burnt sugar, not caramelizing sugar, but burnt sugar in the distance. A woody smell. I've got the raw cacao, dark chocolate. What is there? Mandarin Jasmine Black Tea. Like I'm not getting the Mandarin. I'm getting the black tea purely from a tannin point of view, but like from the, yeah, like, like oolong type black tea for me, like a fragrance, but not quite too strong. The Jasmine, I'm not sure if it's Jasmine or Jasmine flowers. I think it's more Jasmine tea. I get that as well. But not the flowers so i'm not sure what they intended but hey that's always good to compare quite a clean smelling coffee the roast is definitely light to medium quite a clean light to medium um coffee extract you know what i am getting that mandarin but more, I'd say, orange peel. Not mandarin, but orange peel. Spanish red cedar. A slight earthiness to it. The umami is showing itself. A slight medicinal character on the nose. Let's sniff this one. Okay, that is amazing. Chalk and cheese, chalk and cheese, or washed and anaerobic. Um, I definitely get the funk out of this one. I definitely get some funk, like a, I know it sounds weird, but like a cabbagey sauerkraut, Brussels sprouty gas. Whoa, the nose on this is so much more strong than this. Now, I, for all intents and purposes, same grammage, same water. I 
I'm getting more delicate fruit nuance from this, but there's a funk, the cabbage is kind of overpowering. There's a dirtiness to it, like a wet cloth that's been sitting around for a while. Spoiled fruit, a little bit of spoiled fruit. Such different noses, such different noses. So the nose on this is much more strong. Herbal, medicinal, much stronger. This one, much lighter, it's got a funk to it. It's vegetal. But you get very, very nuanced perfumes. Hard to get actually. Very hard to get those perfumes. Almost like a Calvin Klein CK1. Rose water. Just a faint hint of flowers. Very interesting, very interesting. Very interesting on the sip. Okay. The washed is more sour forward, sour fruits, sour plum, sour cherry, um, a bit more acidic on the palate. The, the anaerobic is sweeter, less sour, sweeter and less sour. How strange is that? It is also softer in flavor. The anaerobic is more subdued. It, it's a lot more subdued. Now I'm just taking to the differences in the two. I'm not going to the notes so much. It's more of a fascinating thing to go to the difference in flavor. The anaerobic is slightly more bitter on the um, back palate on the finish, whilst the washed stays quite sour throughout the whole lot. The washed is less smoky. This one is smokier. It's coming through a bit more. The anaerobic is woodier, whilst the washed is definitely a lot more fruity. A lot more fruity and sour and tart. And the anaerobic is more earthy, woody, savory, smoky. But also sweeter which is really strange now this is the first time i've done this where i've got exactly the same beans same farm same lot different process and it's been very fascinating yeah anyway um delicious both are quite light coffees they're not very heavy in the palate and heavy in the flavors though i'm comparing them with each other but very delicate coffees actually and i found that with the other gesha as well quite a delicate coffee um, so that's fascinating in itself. So what I'm getting now, I've got a third Gesha that I'm going to do. That one is a Mexican Gesha. So it might have some notes of taco burrito and beans. Maybe, I'm just joking. That's racial profiling. I'm allowed. I've got immunity. So, um, so far the two Geshas that I've tried, the flavor profile has been quite nuanced and very delicate. That's what, what I'm getting from that quite light nothing too heavy nothing too confronting and dare i say it easy drinking but the two are so different here the washed is very actually i thought it was going to be the other way the washed i thought was going to be a lot softer but actually the anaerobic flavor is more rounded okay it's more rounded but the flavor is more robust yet rounded whilst this one is a little bit more thrash metal this one is 80s love songs do you know what i mean so the anaerobic is more kind of chill chill and vibey as opposed to this one here it's a little bit more confronting but as a general proposition compared to the other coffees that i've had so far gesha is definitely on the more subtle delicate side of coffee how interesting is that anyway look until next time make sure you smoke drink and caffeinate
Cheers.